Okay, today on uh, the episode today, we're going to be talking about how to know when you're ready to return back to your sport. Um, again, this is a big, big puzzle, big part of the, you know, especially in professional sports and it's even general population. You have an injury, you have an accident, something like this, and you're wondering, when can I start playing golf again? When can I start uh, running again or do play rugby football again? So. These are all very valid questions, and it's not that simple, unfortunately. Otherwise, there'd be a lot more, you know, masters at it. I mean, you see a lot of the time, you know, footballers, you know, get picking up injuries, and um, you know, getting re-injured with their hamstring strains. Always another one, another one, another one. So, uh, and there's multiple reasons why that can be the case, you know, uh, for why people are getting re-injured. But just some things for people to talk, think about and be able to offer some, you know, sort of support on that would be is for me is looking at the, the whole process you know so often you, know, you start with a physio you get assessed uh, you get diagnosed you get a prognosis from the physio on what it's what's going to happen um, and then you've got to start the the rehabilitation program uh, uh, process you know which can be depending on the injury or uh, what it is or the activity you're trying to get back to it can be as long or as short who knows ACLs can take a year some things may just take a couple of weeks, a muscle tear, something like that. So it always depends on what the actual injury is, what's actually happened, uh, how much of a deficit there is, how much psychological and physical trauma was involved uh, with the incident. And then you've got to then, you know, that, that, that all comes into play, you know, because rehab is, yeah, there's the physical side, but the body's healing that. You know, the body's going to be working through that, whether it's the bone, whether it's a muscle, whether it's a ligament, all these type of things. But uh, what's often forgotten about, and actually the most important part of rehabilitation is the psychological element and rebuilding the confidence and the trust in that site, whether it is the ligament, whether it is, you know, the bone or anything else. And that sometimes can be career-ending just from the psychological point of view. You know, athletes can just never, like, say, Conor McGregor with his you know, shattering, you know, with his shin and his foot, you know, breaking that, you know, you can never, you might never be able to put as much force and effort into those your kicks ever again because the last time you kick someone your whole foot just you know cut, you know broke basically and exploded so you know that's a really big part of it but you know generally with um you know knowing you know when you're good to go you know you've got to start off on what what is required from your sport where were you before to what was the, the current that your previous threshold and your limits where you got injured, uh, knowing the mechanism of injury, because that's where you've got to really attack and aim towards in terms of the direction of your rehab. You've got to go back to and try and replicate that mechanism of injury. Uh, yes, from a physical point, but also the psychological, that you've been in that position where you got injured before and you've come out of it okay. And so the big part of it is progressions and regressions. That's the, that's the biggest part of rehab. You've got to go from very, very you know low level, easier exercise and build up to whatever your level was or needs to be at to be able to do what you want to do again because that's that's the main thing you know with all these type of things so you know you're obviously going to do injury you know specific rehab for the site you know to cruciate ligament or if it's a bone you know there's all these different progression models with each type of injury um so that's all relative to that you know say with bones you go from more open kinetic chain exercises to more closed kinetic chain so it's less you know go from very less loading to more loading um you know uh, but generally you're going to start off with very slow movements controlled movements holding positions getting rid of that inhibition you know phys physically and psychologically reconnecting you know uh, with uh, neurologically with with the area that you're trying to work on uh, functional progression is a big one because yes you can get really good in the gym uh, but that doesn't mean it's going to translate to the field or the pitch so this is where a lot of re re you know, sports rehabilitators come in because they take people from the gym and try and then progress them towards whatever the activity was and that's that's the biggest thing so uh, doing more sports specific drills not because to try and improve their skill set in in the sport. It's more from a, a point of view to actually um, just get them ready to start playing those sports again. Maybe they haven't played those sports for a couple of months, maybe a year or so, who knows, depending on, on the type of injury. So it's important to be able to uh, get them psychologically, start getting them towards, you know, instead of, you know, standing on one leg on a BOSU, 
holding a dumbbell, you're going to start holding a rugby ball, or you're going to hold a basketball, and you start throwing and catching and passing, and all these type of things start building up the hand-eye coordination, or the more just keep going towards the sport and or activity a little bit more than than not. You know, start holding a golf club in your hand rather than just a um, yeah, PVC pipe, for example. You know, so. And that's the other thing. You've got to go from these really controlled environments to uncontrolled. When you're playing sports, it's all over the place. You know, especially if you're playing like a big team sport or a ball sport, even tennis, like it's not predictive, you know, like you've got to then, you know, you're reacting to an external object, you're reacting to a ball, you're reacting to other people or a person in front of you. Uh, it's not predictive. Um, and so you've got to go through all these different dynamics. You go from a controlled to an uncontrolled. You've got to start increasing the intensity as well, you know, putting more load through the system, uh, on the tissues, all these type of things. Again, basic strength standards uh, that maybe the physio or the rehabber is looking for, to ensure that you're strong enough. And then once you've got the amount, enough force you can, or stability or whatever your balance, you know, between different muscle groups that you need to be, then you can start looking at adding some acceleration, some speed on top of that, because most sports require some sort of power, some force and acceleration and deceleration, uh, which again, I mean, I mean, this is a very broad question, so it's very hard to answer specifically. But again, these are just, I'm just trying to give you the kind of variables you need to be looking at and thinking about if you're looking to try to return to a sport or an activity and know if you're ready or not. So yeah, increasing the intensity uh, to build the confidence, mimicking the, the the, the speed of the actual activity you're looking at. If you're doing a very slow sport, maybe like yoga, and you don't have much speed work to work on, but you certainly need to get stronger. You know, strength is important. Um, you know, say with yoga, for example, hypermobility is always a massive thing. Um, whether it's in the knees, the elbows, shoulders, all these type of things, and get ligament damage, tendinopathies. They're, or they're utilizing, they're not utilizing enough of their muscles enough uh, in eccentric. And uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of holding, uh, um, but, um, you know, in isometric positions, a lot of poses where you're holding positions, uh, but maybe not so much eccentric work or pulling work. A lot of hat work when you're pushing, you know, hat on your hands a lot. So, uh, so that's the main thing. You've got to increase that intensity so that when you go back to the activity, it feels easier. It's not as uh, strenuous and stressful as it was before. Exposure to mechanism injury. You know, if you had it, you know, say in an ACL or your PCL, you hyperextended your knee, you've got to go back to trying to hyperextend your knee in your rehab process because if you never go back there, you know, you're always going to have that fear of, oh, my knee might hyperextend and I might, this injury might come back. So you've got to um, you know, mimic those that, that mechanism injury in a controlled environment at slower speeds initially, build the speeds, build the complexity, build the more uncontrolled reactive nature of it, uh, and then building competition. Competition is the last thing in a rehab process when you start getting someone to compete against someone else. Because whatever the technique, whatever training you might have done for months or weeks or months or maybe even a year can go out the window um, when someone there's a competition involved. People go back to their old ways. So you really got to, you know, competition often is added in too early. Um, to people's rehab process. So again, if you can pass through doing some competitive little drills, like one-on-one -on -one with someone or you know a couple of people, that's fine. Uh, for most team sports, you can start reintroducing them back into like the warm-ups, into some of the drills, get them part of the team. And that's another whole question anyway. You don't want to be removing people from the team environment. That's another thing that just slows the healing process. And just, you know, no one feels great from it. So um, yeah, exposure to the mechanism of injury is big. Uh, and I always say, like, try and get way beyond where you were before. So if your numbers were here and your vertical jump and your squat and your push-ups or whatever the measurements you're looking at in your SNC, get way beyond that. You know, get way stronger, more conditioned than you've ever been before even going through all your functional progressions and sport-related things because you're just going to feel yourself with more confidence. Like, I'm way stronger than I was before, you know, before I got injured. Um, so I'm more robust, I'm fitter, I'm more resilient. So... Um, again, it's always just building the confidence. What can you do with yourself or with your, or with your client that um, can boost their confidence, boost the trust back in their body? Uh, because that's always on. Get rid of all that inhibition and inertia that kind of is created from injuries. So um, and that's why I always believe training harder than you compete. So just go way beyond in your training. 
uh, really push yourself. So then when you start going back in some of like the warm up drills, same rugby, so I used to you know work with a lot of rugby players. Um, you know, it's easy. Oh yeah, I've done all this. I've done that. I've done karaoke. I've done you know all the passing drills. Like, and then you just want to keep building on the you know, momentum and the confidence and keep ramping that up. And then start you know playing like you know a little bit. Just start doing some of the contact drills. Start building into like doing ten minutes at the end of the game. All this type of stuff. Um, and the other thing is then uh, monitoring the fatigue uh, on that side of it because because players are injured, you know, you're injured maybe, you know, you can do a lot of work, you've got a lot of time on your hand, you might be doing too much, and especially when you start adding in all these other factors of uh, more uncontrolled environments, uh, competition, it's more draining on the system. So uh, it's important that that's managed as well, you get you know, good sleep and recovery and everything else. But for me, the biggest thing to know is just, you know, from all of this, is how do you know when you're ready to play sport? It's sure you've got to have some objective data of strength and uh, speed and whatever your sport is. Have some objective data. You've also got to have this subjective. Like how are you feeling about? Do you have any confidence? Like me, I dislocated this shoulder a number of times. And it's like, do I feel like I could actually perform on this shoulder? Can I, can I snatch or can I hit someone in rugby? No, then I'm probably not ready to play. You know, if you and that's it. Especially the higher up in sport and more professional you get. You, you know, uh, the consequences are normally only worse, you know, if you're not fully prepared or ready to go. A lot of footballers re-tearing their hamstrings or push them out of the season even longer and they could have just spent an extra couple of weeks on the rehab and they wouldn't be out for another six months, for instance, you know, all this type of stuff. So you've got to have the objective data. You've also got to have the subjective uh, as well and like how are you feeling about it? Do you feel good to go? And that comes a lot of it from, you know, doing smart rehab. Um, have you been through all these progressions? Have you, you maxed out all the progressions? Are you competing really high complex, high volume, high intensity, pre-fatigue, all these type of things that you just feel like, yeah, I can, I'm, I'm way better, way stronger, way faster than I've ever been. My bone feels good. You've got the x-ray or you've got MRIs or x-rays showing that the graft is healed, the bones are healed, like everything's good. So you're just layering all this confidence one on top of the other and then you go from there. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Uh, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you enjoyed the, uh, the video. I'll be answering a lot of different sort of questions and videos that are uh, in the coming videos on all these topics that uh, I often get asked about or coach on day to day. So hope you find it useful. I enjoy doing them. So uh, we'll uh, see you on the other side.